Today we're going to be installing the LED fog lights in the bumper on my 2019 Volvo S60. So here you can see this is the panel that comes in and that is one of your um, sensors for uh, obstacle detection. So this is going to be reused and we're replacing this panel with this one that's got the cutout for the factory Volvo LED fog light which is going to go right in here. Um, I bought a set of these fog lights from uh, a guy on eBay. I bought both left and right for less than $120 uh, which is normally what they would cost a piece from the dealership but uh, if you can get them great. Uh, then this panel did actually come brand new from the dealership and it was about $120 for both of these the left and the right and I will get you part numbers for those if you need them. For the right hand side it is 314-55639 and the left hand side 314-55638 now again, this is for a 2019 Volvo S60. This is a T6 Momentum. Your model may be different. I know with the inscription models, they have a uh, chrome trim piece, I believe, that goes up around here, or if it's just on the lower bumper, not sure. Um, actually, if I remember correctly, it, maybe it it's, uh, comes up over the top here. Anyway. Uh, so make sure you get the right part. If you have to, go to the dealership and uh, have them look it up by your VIN number. Um, and then you'll, you'll have to just switch out. As far as the fog lights, they actually came from a V60. Uh, but I did cross-reference the uh, part numbers on those and it is the same. And I have received comments in the past about calling these white lights fog lights. People telling me that white lights are driving lights and the yellow lights are a fog light. But I looked at the owner's manual. The owner's manual calls it a fog light. So I am going to continue to call this a fog light. Um, now with what I am doing today, we will not have the function of the factory uh, fog light switch. They will not dim or turn off when you turn your high beams on. You will have a separate switch uh, because the wiring in the car does not exist and I will show you what I mean here in just a minute. But what we are doing is using the factory wiring in the bumper to attach to the factory fog lights. But then we're going to have to splice in our own connector and do an aftermarket wiring loom. Uh, not a fan of cutting the factory harness, but it doesn't seem like there's ever going to be an option to add the factory fog lights to this trim model because of the software updates that are required. So I'm just going to have to do it my own way. And uh, if it ever does become something that can be done, then it's easily reversible in the harness. Uh, so let's go around to the wiring harness and I will show you what the difference is. So I've gone ahead and pulled the sheathing loose off of this harness um, so we can get to the wires a little easier. If you look at the two sets of rows in here, you'll see there's a pink and a purple in a row all by itself. And then you've got this brown, white, brown, gray, white, and yellow all together. Those six wires go to your uh, obstacle detection system. And then this black wire with a purple tracer on it is the ground wire for your fog lights. You'll see how those three wires, get that back in focus, these three wires here and these two here kind of sit by themselves. Now let's go take a look at the harness side on the car where you'll see these two wires and that one aren't there. Okay, so this is the car side harness. You can see there's those six wires that I had mentioned. The ground wire that would be over here is not there. And down in this row here, that purple and the pink wire are not in here. These are all for your uh, front object detection system. So we're going to cut those three wires off of the bumper side, splice in our own harness, and then we're going to run 
a connector right next to this one and then we will kind of shoot it up behind the bumper here and uh, up towards that fuse box. So we're going to start out by getting everything on the bumper side done and get the wires run up here to where we can do something with them. Now a couple of things you're going to need to uh, make this all work is this is a uh, aftermarket wiring harness for auxiliary lights or fog lights, whatever you want to use. Um, I have not opened this yet, but uh, it is set up where you have the full wiring that will go to each side and it comes with its own pigtail so you can wire them in. However, I don't want to cut them at the fog light. I'm going to splice them here. So I'm going to end up taking a chunk of this harness out so I've only got one wire coming down that will join into this that will go to those two. I will be joining that pink and purple wire together. Those are the hot wires. They'll go to the red wire on one of these connectors. And then on this side, I'm bundle this. I'm, the switch is just going to be like a sticky tape kind of deal. I'm not going to hard wire. I'm not going to cut any holes. I don't want to put any holes on the interior. I want this to be completely reversible. Um, so let me untangle that. So the upside is it does have its own connector so we can disconnect the switch. It does have three wires. You're going to have obviously power going into it and then back out to activate uh, it'll activate this relay here that will power the whole system for you. Um, and then there's a ground wire that triggers the red and green lights on it to come on and off. If I don't want that, I think I might end up cutting that, green, that uh, ground wire in the harness and that'll just eliminate the lights but the wires will still trigger the fog lights the way it's supposed to. Um, the only two connections you have to your car is a red which goes to your positive battery terminal or to a positive fuse and I will do that and then a ground which you just ground to your chassis somewhere the relay and then off of that this really so this thinner wire right here let me bump, pull that back up that's the one that goes to the switch and then this longer one which I'm really not going to need a good portion of this it comes down, comes to this where it splits to two different connectors and uh, I'm going to reuse one of the connectors to plug into this which will plug into these wires here and then the rest of it will all be up under the hood. I'm going to try and get it up in the fuse box. It is freezing cold out here. We've got a major snowstorm coming for me this time of the year when I film this video. Uh, so we're going to try and get at least everything for the bumper done, the bumper put back on the car, and the wires will at least be bundled up in the fuse box where we're going to tie into it. This harness cost me less than $15. I'll put a link for it down in the description. Uh, then the other thing you're going to want to get was a great deal on that. Again, it was less than $15, bucks, and I got all of these add a fuses because again I don't want to cut into any of the factory wiring so what this will do is under the hood you will unplug one of your fuses well the factory fuse will go back into the bottom opening on this and then the top goes to this wire which we're going to join into the uh, aftermarket wiring system for our fog lights this way it can come right back out of there and no harm, no foul, won't do any damage to our car. The big thing with using these is you got to know which direction your power is coming in because you want it coming in on the side opposite of the wire. Uh, we will be accessing the uh, 12 volt power outlet that is right in front of the gear selector. Um, and that's under the hood. I wanted to do it off of one of the low beam headlights, but I can't find a fuse for that. Whenever you turn the power on, all of the headlight fuses underneath there are powered, and I think that's because it runs on a CAN bus system. Uh, I would have assumed that there would still be some type of high voltage going to the headlight and a fuse somewhere for that but there's nothing that I can find in any of the fuse boxes. So if you happen to be watching this and you know where I can find power 
for the low beam on the headlight that I can use without cutting the factory wiring. Uh, let me know, leave me a comment down below. Uh, so in the meantime, let's get this uh, put together. We're gonna go ahead and pop these out. Make sure you unplug your sensor first. Uh, we'll pop that out, get our new fog light attached. Uh, and the other thing I forgot to mention, when I bought the uh, new plates from the, the new bezels from the dealership, I forgot to pick up the screws that hold the fog light in place. I just went to the auto parts store and I got some of the, uh, the screws that hold your license plate in because uh, they go into a plastic, very similar size hole. They work well. So that's what I'm using and they were pretty inexpensive. So let's get this part of it done. Okay, so to start this, I've got my soldering iron plugged in and that's warming up. Um, I went and I've got some heat shrink tubing that's for 14 to 16 gauge. It's actually a little bit large for these wires, but okay for these. That was one other thing I wanted to mention. You want to use um, a wire that's either the same gauge or heavier than what these are. And since I'm going to be joining these two together, I just went ahead and went with something heavier, which is actually going to be a 14 gauge wire. These are only like a, a 20, 18 or 20 gauge. I'm not 100% sure. But I just went with something a little bit heavier uh, because I would rather have a, a larger size in there than risk melting something and starting a fire. So we're going to go ahead and get these three wires cut. I'm going to leave a couple inches on the factory harness side so if I ever do get uh, the opportunity to put the factory ones back in and they will work, uh, then I can just join this back together. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that cut and get this, get some heat shrink slid on these first so we don't lose it, uh, so we don't forget. And then uh, we will get this done. So um, wire cutters, like I said, I'm gonna leave a, about an inch or so on that side. Same goes with these two, and I'm gonna try and keep them all roughly the same length. myself a good amount here because I'm going to a heavier gauge wire. Forgot to hit record there. Uh, so I just slid the heat shrink on there and like I said you can see it's very very big for this but we're okay. I'm going to take that piece that I left hanging there and just as I spin it it'll twist my wires together. Looks nice. What I like to do is put my soldering tip underneath and let it kind of melt into it. There we go, there's the ground wire. Now we'll do the hot wire. All right, so there it is. It's not pretty, I'm not proud of it, but it will work. And if I need to uh, fix it in the future, I know where my problem's gonna be. Um, so now I'm just gonna take some scotch. This is the, uh, what do they call it? It's Super 33 Plus electrical tape. I'm uh, just going to get a couple of short pieces of that. And a razor blade. What am I trying to do that? Just a little extra security over top of the, uh, or underneath rather, the shrink tape. So I took an extra piece of shrink tubing that I'd slid on here, pulled it up as far as I could get it, and shrunk that on. Now I'm gonna tape these wires together and then I'm gonna tape them all back as a bundle. Uh, I'm not gonna record that. I don't think you need to see me doing that part. You know, I taped that all up and I never did test it, so I hope this works. <laughs> so the next thing we're gonna do, let's unplug this sensor. And that should be pretty simple to do. We wanna be careful when we take that panel out of there that bezel piece. Uh, there's just a few clips that hold it in place. Uh, we'll pop that out, get the light put in, the new bezel on. Well, actually, we'll swap that over and then put the bezel on. And then we'll test it. Definitely didn't make these easy to remove. Now, you'll notice the sensor faces 
it faces towards the center of the car. There's a little tab, top and bottom. You just got to pull those apart. And you should be able to. And there it went. And there it is. So, again, it faced this way, but in the new bezel, which goes this direction, it doesn't fit. It actually flips it the opposite way. And it pops right back in. I'm going to go around to the other side, put this in, and then we'll work on getting the fog light attached. I've got uh, some dielectric grease. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit on that on that fitting there. The connector. We just want to make sure that it doesn't take a whole lot. We just want to make sure that moisture doesn't get into this. There it goes. Locked in, nice and secure. Now I'm just going to unplug this from the side. This right here, which you may not be able to see, uh, there's one on each side. That is your factory fog light wire. Where's that off? Pull that back out of the way. Give us some better light to see that. Fog light. These are labeled left and right, so obviously this is the left. I'm going to get Love this ratchet. It's a Craftsman. Pick it up at Lowe's. I'm just going to get them all started just to make sure nothing falls apart on me. Keep in mind you're going into plastic, so these don't have to be crazy tight. You just want to make sure it doesn't wiggle. A little more dielectric grease. I'm going to put some right in the edges of the light there. And some around here as well. Again, not going crazy with it. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle this around a little bit. Get that to spread. Plug it in. Go ahead and grab one of these. I'm going to connect this. I'm not going to put any dielectric grease on this. Not yet anyway. Let's go ahead and just plug it in. And uh, I do have, let me cap this, a test battery that I can hook this all up to and we'll see if it works. So, test battery. All my connections are made. I just need to put a ground on. And all I got to do Oh, you see the red light? Well, you probably can't. There's a red light on there. When I push this, it's going to turn to the green one, and it's going to be bright. Let's see what happens. Look at that. They both work. Uh, so, red light says it's off. Green light says it's on. So, maybe that's not so bad. They're not too crazy bright. I might leave those working. Uh, so let me disconnect this and we'll put the bumper back on the car. So I guess before I put the bumper on, I should show you, here's uh, the other wire. I just took the longer one from that harness and I cut it. It's right here. There is the, um, the uh, factory harness. So this one sits pretty close to it. I ran it up next to the horn. It goes up behind the bumper and I took the, the air box out. You can see the wire came up right here, and this is where it's at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tape off of the sheathing right here and slide it in through this rubber fitting so it's inside this fuse box. And that's where I'm going to stop for today. Let me get that cut off, slide it through, and I'll show you what that looks like. 
This is probably the hardest part of the whole thing to film because I can't get my camera up here. But uh, I got these uh, needle nose pliers that have a angle bend in them. I'm going to get into this grommet. You can see I already got the one wire pulled through. I want to get the one for the switch to go back the opposite direction. So I need to slide these up inside that grommet. And I can open them up and spread that apart a little bit. So I can take this big connector. I probably could have depinned it, but I didn't want to do that. So the idea is wow, that was not easy, but I got it out. Now I'm just going to take this extra slack. I'm going to pull it all the way out of here. Yeah, and there's my, uh, you can see I cut a whole chunk of that uh, harness that goes to the lights out of there. I want to get as much of this as I can because I don't know how much I'm going to need. I think that ought to give me plenty of slack. So these aren't going to be hooked up to anything just yet. Neither will these. Um, so I think I'm just going to slide this down underneath for now. There's a good size gap down here I can stick that into. Um, I'm going to put tape on these. Actually, I'm going to cut these ring terminals off because I don't need those. I think I'm going to ground it right here, and then this will go to one of those fuses. Now, before I forget, there was a zip tie I cut uh, that has a little anchor point down here. So before I even get any further, I'm going to slide a new zip tie through there and have that ready for when I do the rest. Let's pull this out of the way. All right, so some tape around this. We'll get this all sealed up. You know, I think I think there's an opening to that battery. So we're going to start out right here in the uh, fuse panel underneath the hood. You can see where I plugged in this extension. It, it uh, takes the factory fuse. This is the 12 volt outlet that is up by the uh, gear shifter. And uh, what it does is this plugs in where the fuse was at. The bottom fuse is the 15 amp that runs that circuit. And then the one on top runs to this wire which runs the fog lights and uh, they only will work when the ignition is on. So uh, by doing that, I'm, it's totally reversible. And then down here, you can see there's my relay. All my wiring is just kind of tucked down in here. Well, it was, there we go. So it's all inside. Um, it's grounded out here to this bolt by the air cleaner. And then the wire runs back out through that grommet that I, there's a photo I'm going to show you here. Uh, and it runs underneath this box right here, which is your support battery. It's a 12 volt battery. And then here's the line from the air filter that goes to the intake manifold, actually around to your intercooler and all that. But anyway, uh, so right down under here, I'll show you a photo of that is another grommet that uh, I was able to just pull it back a little bit, slide my wire through it. It's, it's almost like a metal plate that's got a rubber cover on it. Um, and into the main firewall into the cabin. And of course, this was the last thing I did here getting that finished up. But once I put this cover on, it's all buttoned up and you can't tell I did anything from under the hood. So under here, get that so up under here uh, this is the brake pedal there's an opening almost like there would have been a clutch in this car uh, I was able to pull a little piece of insulation off and drilled my hole through the wire just runs up behind the dash panel here and it's just attached right here on the side so when I push that button it'll turn the lights on and off So that's how I went ahead, get my fog lights wired in. Again, uh, it's manually on and off. So if you have to turn on your high beams 
technically you should turn off the fog lights but then again if you have your high beams on you shouldn't be having cars coming at you anyway so I guess it's uh, just kind of a personal choice uh, that's all I got them hooked up thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video